so that I can say, bring some of them to know the Lord. That's the intent. That, I think that right there is a huge heart of what the Holy Spirit gives us. Being able to have conversations, I can have a conversation with Jocelyn that's going to be very different than the conversation with Sammy. Like, it just is going to be. And I can utilize different aspects of the Holy Spirit and we can work together in a different way than I'm going to work with you. Like that's, and the same way we do this is the same way God does it with us. Never can we compare Mary and Martha because Mary's, conver Mary's conversation and relationship with Jesus was very different than Martha's conversation with Jesus. Different situations and only as human beings do we compare. Never does anyone else ever, never does Jesus ever do the comparison and do the conviction ever. Never. So we shouldn't have that right either. <laughs> That's what I think. Well, I think you talk about the Holy Spirit and, you know, and um, in the moment being all things to all people and, and deciphering that. I think that's even how he wants to partner with us, again, even in, in reading scripture, because it's not the same, you know, scriptures aren't even the same for me that I read three years ago aren't the same for me now in this moment. And it, it's always the relationship with him in the moment of partnering. And so um, I think, again, we have the right to look at different verses and scripture and, and ask the Lord, what are you saying to me in this moment? Um, and how are we partnering together regarding um, this, this Bible verse or this scripture? Because right. um, it's never the same. And that conversation, not only is it never the same with you and God, years later, but it's different. Like, it's different for Brett. When he reads the same, same verses that I'm reading, right. he's going to get something out of it because his conversation with the Holy Spirit is different than my conversation with the Holy Spirit. And I love that. that there, there's no room for judgment there because you, you can't. Who are you to say anything about someone? People ask me, like, oh, I have conversations with my brother who's not there yet. But he'll say something like, oh, the, no, the, you know, they're not Christians. They're not saved. And, they're, uh, and I'm like, who are you to, that's not, you have no idea. It's between them and God, and that's it. How are you to say, and how are you to even, <laughs> and I was always told, oh, you'll know it by their fruit. Oh, you, have you guys heard this? You heard it before. Oh, you'll know it by their fruit. If they're living in a good life and showing the fruit of the Holy Spirit to others, you will be able to tell that they are a Christian. <sighs> It's between them and God. I don't know where any of you stand with you and God, and it's none of my business. And I can never know that because it's between you and God. And I love that it's so personal in such a spiritual way that the, the things that you're being told right now between you and God are amazing. And I have no idea what they are. And what I'm getting from God and what's happening here and what's happening between you, like it's just, it's rich. And it's vibrant, and it, it makes Scripture come alive to everyone uniquely. I love that. Lindsay has something to say. You made me think of something that I was pondering today. Um, in the shack, when um, Max sees God, and, he, and she is his old neighbor that was kind and loving, and then God changed when he needed a father figure to the Indian gentleman. And I realized um, the beauty of that is that that is how God comes to us, is the, the conversations he has with me is what's going to be the most beneficial for me and my story and my heart. And so a lot of our conversations are him trying to get me out of A or B conversations. Um, a or B statements and going let's talk about C right. or J and how creative can we get with how big a God I am and that's my personality because I don't do well with absolutes like I don't do well with black and white I am always there's always gray but there's other people that he created thank God that see things in black and white and right and wrong. That's why we have laws, because I would sit and ponder laws for 20 years and go, now who, 
who would this hurt? Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> and I would never, I can't make decisions is what I'm saying. So I thank God that he made us all unique because then things will get done and, and then, but our conversations have to sound different because of our uniqueness. And so it doesn't mean that God changes because people would always say, oh, that's, you know, so God's just subjective and it's whatever you want him to be. He doesn't change, but he doesn't mind coming to us just like Jesus did, coming down to our level and understanding our language in the way that we can receive it. And that is just like number 1054 of why I love him, yeah. is that he knows us right. that well. So we wanted to ask any of you all if you have had any scriptures um, or story, you know, Bible stories that um, the Lord has unfolded for you in a different way. Because um, I certainly would feel blessed to hear um, from you all. Um, I just think it's such a beautiful picture when scripture is made alive within each of us. So. Um, do any of you have any? I've been um, reading Hosea. So you go, why Hosea? Well, there was a, right, so there was a, a book from a gal who writes novels about, and her name is Mesu um, Andrews. And so I started reading it because somebody had recommended it, and, and I just got enthralled by it. So because it, it is kind of putting skin on the story. So um, I, I had first of all read Jose, and I didn't like that book at all. I don't know why God would do that, make a man who was so faithful marry someone who's unfaithful and stay with her, even though she's continuing to be unfaithful. Um, and I understood that, okay, so it's this, but this is supposed to be real. This was a real person. So it would, it would really hurt my heart um, over that. And so anyway, by reading this, this um, novel about it and then going back and reading Hosea just made me weep because I started seeing God's love for us because um, recently I've I know some really dear friends that their marriage is broken up and the husband is totally um, gone away from God and um, I I just I just see God in a bigger way, kind of like what you were saying only God knows what's really going on in his heart um, God only knows, and, and yet he loves us so much that he keeps wooing us back, and he knows what's going to touch us. And in the story that this um, the gal had written about Hosea's wife, she, um, once she came back to him and she was starting, to, she's like, okay, I will be faithful to you. He says, no, I don't want you to come here first. I want you to go out into a cave. And, you know, that seemed like harsh to me, but then his reason was he wanted her to experience God like she would be afraid in that cave she would only and she could only rely upon him and so watching the transformation of her helped me and then seeing it back in the Bible I'm like oh a lot of the things she really based on the scriptures and it just came alive in such a way that I was like oh my goodness so this wasn't this was God's mercy it was his mercy to show not just the Israelites that he still loved them even though like they kept rebelling kept rebelling and all through it there's still parts that I still cringe you know I, I'm not totally you know loving that book but um, the first four chapters are are the story of um, Hosea and his wife that was the prostitute and and I just was like thank you God that because I you know we have those things that our hearts go away but he doesn't see us in like you know he's always wanting to woo us and I love that mm -hmm. so anyway that that's was fresh this summer for me yeah I love that Beautiful. I love that. Anyone else? So I read a quote a couple months back that was kind of disturbing at first, and it says, everyone is right, 
And uh, it sounded like heresy at first, but if you think of it, say like where we believe right now is maybe different than where we believed, say, 10 years ago. So were we wrong 10 years ago and right now? Or is it the fact that maybe we were developing at that point and God could only show us a certain amount according to what we could receive at that point? And that that was as best we could do at that time. So it's kind of... Um, kind of mind-blowing and kind of opening when you think of that, that instead of viewing people as like black or white, you're wrong and I'm right, that maybe that's just where they are at that, in life at that point, yeah. and um, that's where God has them at that point. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah, again, you, you have no idea where someone else is on their walk. Oh, if they, whatever, you know. Or even sometimes where we are ourselves. <laughs> Some days I'm right. like, I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know what I believe, I right. don't know where I'm at. But, but that's the journey, you know, and um, I think God's a lot less hung up about it than we sometimes are, you know, um, regarding what, where we stand on things or, you know, where, um, what our hard lines are. Um, anyone else? nothing comes to mind so I would love for us to just have a time of listening because I think that the Lord um, is excited to have conversations with us about um, maybe some misconceptions or even just questions so if you want to take a card out of the bucket and um, we'll just listen for a minute and if um, the Holy Spirit brings a story or a Bible verse um, to mind um, feel free to you know look it up if you want to and and let's just take some time to ask the Lord what he wants to say about um, about that story or words or verse because I think he's excited to share with us So if I can share, as you guys continue, keep writing. Um, 
Romans 10.9 is one of those verses that we used to talk about a whole lot. And when it kind of came down to sharing the gospel with someone, the whole Romans road, if you guys knew that, it was something pretty popular back in the day. But it was, you know, walking someone through how they need to realize that they're a sinner and they're crappy and then God saved them and because of Jesus saving them that they can become a Christian, which is a hard one to swallow anymore for me. Um, but Romans 10.9 is kind of what it came down to for me for a number of years. If you're going to share the good news with someone, share the gospel with someone and bring them to Christ, they would need Romans 10.9. And Romans 10.9 in the traditional reading that I grew up with says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And like to me that's the bottom line of being a Christian. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Like that was it. If you did those things, boom, you're a Christian and yay, you can go to heaven now. I've kind of since changed my mind a lot. Um, but in this version, which is the Mirror Bible, which is a paraphrase, but he really does his research to make sure that the full intention of the actual Greek words uh, is expressed. And so I'm going to kind of skip around just a little bit. In Romans 10.7, which is kind of the start of uh, the larger paragraph, he says in, in the Mirror Bible, it says, Faith knows that the Messiah is not roaming somewhere in the region of the dead. And that's very different than what I used to read. And then it keeps going. Faith, in verse 8, this says, Faith, righteousness, announces that every definition of distance in time, space, or hostility has been canceled. Faith says, the word is near you, the word being capitalized, being Jesus. It is, close, it is as close to you as your voice and the conviction of your heart. We publicly announce this message because we are convincing that it belongs to everyone. And then 10.9 itself, <laughs> very different. Now your salvation is realized. In big bold letters. Your own words echo God's voice. The unveiling of the masterful act of Jesus forms the words in your mouth, inspired by the conviction of your heart that God indeed raised him from the dead. And then 11, Scripture declares that whosoever believes in Christ will not be ashamed to announce it. And 13, or in 12, he says, nothing distinguishes the Jew from the Greek when it comes to the generosity of God. Love that. When it comes to God giving and loving and the peace that he gives, there is no difference between Jew or Greek, or as we would see it, Muslim or Catholic or Mormon or any religion, any cultural difference in Croatian or French. <laughs> it doesn't matter. God's benevolence is equal to anyone. And then in 13, the definition of what salvation is is very different than what I grew up with, is understanding what salvation is. Salvation is to understand that every person's true identity is revealed in Christ. And that, that I'm going to continue letting sink in and soak in. Because understanding your true identity in Christ is something that we talk about a lot. It's really knowing who you are, who God made you to be, and standing in that, standing with who God says that you are. He created you to be amazing and to be, to have gifts and to have talents in certain ways that he wants you to have, and to be good at certain things that nobody else is good at, and to be even bad at certain things that are okay. It's okay to be bad at certain things. God is allowing that to be there. You may think it's bad, but he's using them anyway. And he's using them for his benefit and for your benefit in your world around you. I tend to be forgetful. I used to be. I've kind of denounced that. 
I'm getting better at it. But I used to forget things on a pretty regular basis. And there were times in my life I could look back on where it was blocked from me. I, it was intentionally kept from my mind. And I w was thinking I'm going to go do one thing and then I forgot to do it and so I turned and just kept going doing something else. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have ended up in, in a certain way, in a certain place. If I had gone and done that one thing that I was supposed to do or thought I should do, bad things would have happened. And because God, I forgot is how it's perceived, I can look back on it and say because God caused me not to remember to do it, good things happen, better things happen. So even the things that I see as like flaws or faults of, oh, I'm forgetful, he's using those things in his own way, in his own manner, and I love that. Anything else? Does anyone want to share what came to their mind or what they heard? Or Kids? No. Yeah. simple um, just he put in my mind um, the verse about your word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and um, yeah and, and um, kind of going through a new s graduation as as Angela put it last week when I talked with her but just a different way of looking at God's word and at his just my relationship with him and all that just has been um, over the years. Uh, I was going to some, you know, we were checking out certain churches and, and there's just such a emphasis on the word and the word and it would feel so dead when they said it. And I didn't know what, why it felt like such death. Because um, it felt like the word was more important than whatever. So then when I was listening to him, I said, so, but you said that your word was living and act. And, and there's this, you know, theology of completion, like the word is all you need. You don't need that. But I'm like, but it says it right there. It's supposed to be living and active. So, you know, it's supposed to give life, it's supposed to be something that brings, and I, and I just start seeing, you know, these living things all, and then that's what his word is. So it's, it's constant, it's changing, it's, it's there, you know. So anyway, I, I'm just starting to think about it, but that was what came to my mind, yeah. yeah. So good, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right, well, Jared, Lindsay, do you want to do, what is it? Is it, oh, is it too late for that? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're learning. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, um, do you want to close us out in prayer? And you've talked enough? Okay. <laughs> I know you didn't stand in for Greg very well. <laughs> The silent one. I said way more words than <laughs> right. Greg has ever said. <laughs> right. All no right. good. Okay, well, I will be happy to close this out then. Lord, we're just grateful for, for you and how you partner with us. Uh, we're grateful for the journey and the adventure that we are on. And that, um, as Britt said, it's not a matter of being right or wrong in this moment, um, but that it's where we are at with you and where we get to go with you. So we thank you for that and we thank you that you just take such delight in us and thank you that you are giving us the opportunity always to agree with your perspective because you've made that available to us um, within ourselves. And um, Lord, thank you for all of these people, these amazing people, and thank you for the ones that aren't here. And Lord, we just ask that you would continue to unfold what you brought to mind um, this evening as we listen to you. Just continue to old, unfold all of that beautiful intention that you have within your heart that you are eager to share with us. And um, 
Bless those that aren't with us. Bring them home safely, as always, and um, just bless this week. So um, I have I don't remember all the things that Angela says, but go and be the salt and the light and the goodness and the peace and joy in.